Welcome to I Communicate on Full Service Radio, AM 830 WCRN. To join the conversation, call 508-871-7000. Now, here's your host, Mark Altman. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another edition, edition of I Communicate, Finding Your Voice. I am your host, Mark Altman, and happy you could be with us on this beautiful Thursday afternoon. And I'm here with my guest, Melissa Glenny, uh, president of Franklin Professional Staffing. Melissa, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. So in my mind, this is a special show today. We talk about um, advocating for your wants and needs and how you can improve in your communication skills at work, at home, in sports, in school. But what makes this show special is I have an expert in what I call R&R, retention and recruiting today. And Melissa is is hired by companies all over the country to help them in recruiting good employees and making sure they retain good employees and leaders. And uh, Melissa, so excited to have you on the show. Oh, I'm excited to be here. It's always a pleasure to talk with you, Mark. So, Melissa, what a what a tough industry staffing is. So, I got to start and ask you, uh, where did your passion come from to uh, put yourself in the uh, firing line of the staffing industry? Yeah, you know, I mean, it. It was something that was totally unbeknownst to me. And then within a couple of weeks of getting into this kind of work, it just totally lit my heart on fire. Um, originally, I wanted to have a production company in the in the music industry and connect talent with wow. producers. So wow. um, so I went from A&R aspirations to, as you say, R&R. Oh, wow, that's great. <laughs> I love it. So um, that's really interesting. So I guess... Knowing that you originally had aspirations for the music industry, what are some qualities and characteristics that you've kind of grown up with that you think serve you well in dealing with employers and employees, so to speak? Well, you know, when I was young, I used to get up at 3.30 in the morning to practice. And I think discipline uh, is um, paramount, really, and, and tenacity and just, you know, sticking with it. Because, you know, dealing with people, it's, um, you, you never know what you're going to get. And, you know, it's, it's exciting because you, um, for that very reason that you don't know what you're going to get, but sometimes it's also an emotional roller coaster. So I think discipline and, and tenacity were two things that I took away from my early hmm. years that have really served me well. So, Melissa, at Mindset Go, we have a wellness program called Body, Mind, Bottom Line. Mm-hmm. And the premise of that program is how companies' bottom lines have changed, where in the old days, everybody was singularly focused on a company's bottom line But now people have started to wake up, and now they're really focused on their own bottom line as Mm -hmm. well as the company's bottom line. What are you seeing when it comes to uh, people who are out there seeking jobs? Do you see that expectations and requirements have changed from the job seekers themselves? Yeah, yeah. You know, as you were asking me that question, I I just, quick tangent, I have to flash to a conversation I was having with a a client last week, um, and I was so happy to hear this. They, They made a major acquisition this year, so... This client says, you know, we really didn't make much bottom line at all. She said it was about $100,000 at the end of the day. And she said, but we gave half of that to our employees because we really wow. feel like they should they should be sharing in what we have. Um, and, and so, you know, in a year like that, I mean, I there were so many businesses that I've worked with where in a year like that, it would be so easy for them to say, we don't have money for raises. We don't have money for bonuses this year. And to to hear that 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 attitude and the the behaviors are shifting, um, so that people are thinking more in the context of the um, the whole of the company and the health of everyone in the company, not just the health of the you know people in who you know have the powers, right? So um, okay, so sorry for the quick tangent. No, there, that but, was that was impressive. Uh, yeah. So you know, and I think that you know that kind of leads into what people are looking for in their organizations is really just to know that, number one, that they're going to be um, seen as an individual who has ideas and valued for what they can bring to the table. Um, I think that goes a long, long way. And the other thing that I, I often will recommend when I'm talking with customers about benefits and how uh, employees will be attracted to them and what will keep them there is you know, really just getting to know the individual and being able to, to speak right to, you know, what's meaningful to the person. There's certainly um, things that are more common, but um, I think that it's important not to assume and to ask the questions of the people that you're employing. Well, I think you bring up a few great points there. When you talk about getting to know the individual, 
So typically, when you interview for a job at a company, you're provided some kind of benefit package. Mm -hmm. And the benefit packages, the standard benefit packages, have sick time and vacation time and, and your health benefits. And there's, there's standard things. What are you seeing that are included in benefits packages now that are much different than in the past that people are now prioritizing? Mm, yeah. You know, a, a great benefits package used to be exactly what you just named off. And, you know, if the employer paid 90 or 80 percent of the premium, that was considered pretty good. You know, that kind of stuff now I find is really just just gets you to the table. Um, beyond, you've got to have stuff in mixed in like you're alluding to, I think. Um, one thing that Zappos did that was really interesting and had a major impact on their retention in a pretty tough marketplace that they were dealing with is they implemented um, a program where they would pay people to leave. Um, and that, that was a really interesting concept that we haven't implemented, but I've really been toying with how we would do that. And so basically after three months, they you know, people uh, that they were bringing on board knew right out of the gate that after three months, I'm going to have the opportunity to say like, yeah, this is for me and I want to stay or they'll pay me. I think it was about a month or maybe six weeks of salary to, to go and empowering people to have that choice and, and, and choose the company after they've had the opportunity to, to try it out um, showed that it really... Um, reinforced individuals' decisions to have joined the company to begin with, and they they really increased their retention by doing that. Yeah, and for our listeners out there, Zappos um, has, I, I had the good fortune several years ago to see the CEO of Zappos speak at a convention I was at, mm -hmm. and they are on the cutting edge of retention and recruitment and culture, and they have really figured it out. So mm -hmm. For you to bring that up, Melissa, if they're doing something like that, that is something we should all be paying attention to. Yeah, yeah. Wow, absolutely. that's incredible. So, so when it comes when it comes to the benefit aspect of the job, are people? You know, one of the things that I think has been so uh, common is working from home. You know, remote work environments. Mm -hmm. Why, Melissa, do you think that is so important for so many people? And why are companies so reluctant to give in on it at times? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a really interesting question. You know, and I've struggled with that myself. So. Um, uh, you know, I think that the emerging workforce has really helped to um, do a couple of things. Uh, I appreciate that they have a much greater appreciation for work-life balance and working to actually live um, as, as opposed to the flip side where, you know, for, for many years I think that people have been so focused on attaining the next level and getting the, a better title or a higher salary or what, whatever the case may be that they were more – living to work, it kind of reversed that. So that kind of, I think, ties into this desire for autonomy and being able to, you know, be comfortable and work other things that, that other interests into life, um, you're really harmonizing. So, you know, for example, sitting in a coffee shop for a few hours before they maybe go hit the gym and then, you know, go back and work from a home office or, um, just being able to be mobile um, may also relate to attention span. You know, it's nice to change mm. the scenery. And, mm. um, That's a good point. Yeah. So uh, it's definitely an interesting concept that I think can work really well. And it is hard for employers to to swallow because it's just such a break in the norm um, when you look back over the way things have been done for 10 years. But Melissa, am I over oversimplifying when I say, look, if someone's working from home, if you've established clear objectives, metrics, goals for that person, it becomes an issue of trust. Because mm -hmm. I know as a, as a CEO of managed people myself, I would always question, are mm -hmm. you working as hard if you're at home? Yeah. But if you have a way to measure the productivity, it should be a non-issue, correct? Yeah, I agree 100%. Absolutely. And I think part of, you you hit it on the head, the, the real issue is trust. Right. And not even not trusting, but but not wanting to be in a position as a leader where you're even questioning. So it's just sometimes feels a whole lot easier if you can just see everybody. So, and there's, and then, you know, one more thought before we head into break there, there's, e even though there aren't as many people looking for jobs out there right now as there have been mm -hmm. in the past. Um, when we come back from the break, Melissa, I would love to explore what are some shortcomings and trends you are seeing from job seekers 
Are they deficient in their communication skills? Are they deficient in their resumes and cover letters? Are they deficient in their confidence and attitude? You know, would love to know what you're seeing where people are struggling to sell and differentiate themselves in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. So we're with Melissa Glennie, Franklin Professional Staffing. I'm Mark Altman. This is I Communicate, Finding Your Voice, and we'll be right back. <laughs> 